Everyone dreads cleaning their bathroom. Unfortunately, certain finishes and fixtures, while beautiful, only make your bathroom more difficult to clean. They're often the difference between a quick wipe down and a lengthy scrubbing session. In this video, I'll be going through 11 things you need to avoid if you want a low maintenance bathroom. Let's get into it. Vessel sinks may be a spectacular feature in a bathroom, but they're a hassle to maintain. As they sit on top of a counter rather than being mounted underneath, water and dirt are bound to get trapped between the counter and the sink, which can be very difficult to clean, especially if they're not properly sealed. If you want to make your bathroom as low maintenance as possible, I'll suggest getting an undermount sink as it is much easier to wipe everything down. Even better is a vanity with an integrated basin as there are no gaps at all where dirt can get caught or mold can form. This is the lowest maintenance option, but you're a bit more limited in terms of look. That said, there's still plenty to choose from and they look really nice when paired with custom joinery. Much like vessel sinks, freestanding tubs look beautiful and are often a centerpiece in the bathroom, but they're not always the best choice in terms of maintenance, especially if you have a small bathroom. While freestanding tubs are generally the easiest type of bath to clean as they have less edges, corners, and sealant lines compared to inset baths, they're only easy to clean if you can reach all of their sides as well as the nearby walls. If your space is too small and your freestanding tub is shoved up against a wall, Dust and dirt will only accumulate in the tiny gap between the top and the wall, and there will be no way to clean it. This is especially worse if you have freestanding tubs inside the shower, as you have to clean them much more often. Luckily, your dreams are not totally destroyed if you love the look of a freestanding tub but have a small space. You can get a back-to-wall or back-to-corner freestanding tub. These tubs line up flush with your wall on one side and have the appearance of a freestanding bathtub on all the other visible edges. This is the perfect way to get the modern look of a freestanding tub while preventing unreachable dust and dirt buildup. In a larger bathroom, just push them slightly further from the wall. About 8 inches is a good number that will allow you to easily clean around the tub. Flat bottom sinks may look sleek and modern, but when it comes to using them, you'll quickly realize that they may have significant draining issues. The main issue is that water drains extremely slowly. Flat bottom sinks don't have a significant enough slope to make water flow into the drain at a pace that collects scraps and dirt with it. This means that they'll often leave unsightly residue buildup. To be fair, they're never completely flat if designed properly. So if you have water puddling, you should contact the manufacturer or builder for faulty design. But some sinks just have a much flatter surface than others. So be sure to check that if you want to keep things low maintenance. I'll also watch out for rectangular sinks with sharp edges. While they do look nice, there's an extra four corners that's really tough to clean. You may not realize that certain types of toilets are much harder to clean than others. Two-piece toilets, despite being the most common and simplest in design, are a challenge to clean. As their name suggests, they're composed of two separate parts, creating a gap between the bowl and cistern, where dust and dirt can easily accumulate in a place that is quite awkward to reach and clean. Plus, cleaning around the bottom and back of the toilet can be frustrating as well. A marginally better option is a close couple toilet. In this design, the bowl and cistern are joined with no visible gap, leaving you with one less thing to clean. The ultimate toilet in terms of ease of cleaning is a concealed cistern toilet, which you can get either wall hung or on the floor. Its cistern is concealed within the wall, so there are less gaps and components to clean. The smooth, seamless sides also make it easier to wipe down. The catch is that these toilets are on the pricier side and are more difficult to fix if something breaks down. As a more affordable alternative, look into wall-faced toilets that offer a streamlined design flush with the wall. It is also a good idea to look into rimless toilets as they are generally more hygienic as there are no spots for hidden germs. And in case you're wondering, good quality ones shouldn't splash when flushing. Before I continue, I wanted to thank Notion for sponsoring today's video. Those who've been following me know that I'm a big Notion user. We have a bunch of templates in Notion, free guides and resources to help you decorate your home, and my whole content also runs in Notion. Recently, Notion launched a new feature called Q&A, which is like having a personal assistant that can answer any questions you may have using information across your Notion workspace. This is totally game-changing for me personally when it comes to writing content. I can quickly collect and collate information like where can I shop for original artworks and it will give the answers including all the reference pages and notes that I have related to the question. This saves a tremendous amount of time instead of scouring through my past notes for specific information. I can also summarize existing knowledge like summarize my insights on maximizing storage for small spaces. 
and it will cite my previous notes which I can then click to dive deeper into each. Or I can find obscure information like find me the study related to light temperature, which I can quickly surface rather than digging through my research. As a business owner, this gets even more powerful. Team members can now ask Notion instead of me for certain things like what are the audio settings for video editing, and it will search through my documentation and give them the appropriate response. This allows them to work faster, saves me time, and they can get answers instantly. If you're already subscribed to Notion AI, you can get started today with Q&A by clicking the star icon on the bottom right hand corner. If you're interested in trying out, you can join the waitlist via the link in the description below. If there's hard water in the area where you live, it is best to avoid dark finishes. Water hardeners refer to the mineral content in water, particularly magnesium carbonate and calcium. You can simply Google, does my area have hard or soft water? But here's a map for the US, UK, and Australia for easy reference. You want to avoid dark finishes if you have hard water as the minerals present tend to create unsightly white stains on these surfaces over time. The darker your finishes, the more visible any white bloom that develops will be. The moral of the story is to choose light colored fixtures and finishes if you live in areas with hard water and go for lighter grout so any white bloom buildup won't be that visible between cleans. Investing in a quality exhaust fan is crucial. While it may seem insignificant during the bathroom planning phase, as most people are purely focused on the aesthetics, you'll regret skimping out on this. A poorly chosen fan may be really noisy or have poor extraction resulting in mold growth. One common mistake I often come across are people selecting exhaust fans without considering its extraction rate. A fan made for a small bathroom in a large bathroom is only going to cause issues. Always check the extraction rate and make sure it suits your bathroom size. Also take into consideration how many windows or skylights you have and how often you leave them open as they can really help with ventilation. In some cases, installing two fans or multiple vents especially one above the shower area, is necessary to tackle this problematic area. Also as a little tip, remember to turn on your exhaust fan before you shower, rather than waiting for the whole room to steam up. It is no secret that grout is one of the hardest things to clean in the bathroom, and stubborn stains sometimes don't even come out, even with the strongest cleaning products. The smaller your tiles are, the more grout will be present in your bathroom, so, if you want your space to be as low maintenance as possible, it is a good idea to opt for larger tiles rather than little penny tiles or mosaic tiles. If you really love the look of tiny tiles, consider epoxy grout as it is waterproof and almost completely stain resistant. The downside is that they're much more expensive and much more difficult to apply as well, so you'll likely need to call a professional. Making the grout lines between your tiles thinner can also make cleaning less of a chore. Traditional cushion edge tiles require 2 to 5 mm of grout to compensate for minor discrepancies in their size. But as rectified tiles have been laser cut after production and have perfect 90 degree edges, they can be installed closer together with grout gaps of only 1 to 2 mm. Having said that, they are more expensive and tricky to install and only come in ceramic or porcelain tiles in larger formats so you're quite limited in terms of looks. As a bathroom is a slippery surface, remember to check the tile slip rating, especially if you offer glossy large format tiles. It is always best to avoid natural materials for wet surfaces in a bathroom, as they are porous and require frequent upkeep. This is especially the case for real marble, which if not sealed and cleaned regularly, will absorb water and dirt and turn yellow over time. Porous natural materials also tend to be a breeding ground for mold. There's also a lot more maintenance and upkeep required to maintain marble in the shower, such as regular sealing, using only pH neutral cleaners, and to avoid using anything rough as the stone surface can be scratched quite easily. If you only have a rain shower head, you'll find yourself lugging around heavy buckets of water to clean your shower. To avoid this, I'll suggest also getting a handheld shower head so you can hose down your shower screen and tiles with ease. This makes cleaning so much easier. There are two options here. You can either get a handheld shower as a separate unit and have it mounted to your wall or get a twin shower system. There are plenty of options and it seriously does make cleaning a breeze. As bathrooms are wet and humid, not every paint sheen is able to withstand the severity of this environment, so you have to choose very carefully. If you're going to take anything from this video, it is that you should never paint your bathroom in flat or matte paint. They are prone to mold in high humidity and are not easy to clean at all, 
which is an important feature for bathroom walls. If you do like the softer look of matte paint, consider the Sherwin Williams Duration Range or the Benjamin Moore Aura. They're both formulated for high moisture environments, but are pricier than regular paints. Alternatively, use satin or semi-gloss paints. Satin is perfect if you want something a bit softer than a gloss texture, but if you want something shinier, a semi-gloss finish is the way to go and it is more durable. We've all experienced bathrooms with bottles, makeups, and other stuff all over the surface. It may seem low maintenance to have them all out and ready for the day, but having things all over your counters does not make cleaning easy. To avoid having to move everything on and off your surface every time you want to clean, plan for more storage from the get-go. Or get storage boxes to leave on your counter where you can organize everything neatly. I find this container from Joseph Joseph quite handy to leave in the countertop with its pull-out drawer, as well as IKEA Saxborga storage box as it is very lightweight and comes with its own mirror. At the end of the day, less is more. Go for simpler products with less corners, seams, ridges, and touch points as they're easier to clean and make your bathroom much more lower maintenance. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my videos on expensive decorating mistakes and things to avoid if you want a low maintenance home. Otherwise, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.